I got the job and they offered me more money than what I had asked for. I've never been to Vancouver prior to moving here and I can't believe I said that. I literally just like hopped on the plane and moved to a completely different place that I've never been to before. And if you had asked me then, maybe in 2018, 2019, I probably would have said, yes, I'm moving back to Toronto. So I've always kind of had a view of money and I don't want to say it's scarcity, but just that it wasn't always abundant. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we've got a really fun one. We are doing a Q&A. I'm going to be answering all of the questions that you guys submitted in the community tab and I'm going to be doing it and they get ready with me style so I hope you guys enjoy this video so the way that I wanted to structure this video is I've put all of the questions that you submitted into a category and today we're going to touch on life luxury finances as well as my small business I just want the vibe of this video to be friend to a friend like you're facetiming me so feel free to just sit back maybe grab your drink of choice right now I'm drinking a tea it's a like lemon ginger Tea. And then I've also got my makeup bags next to me. So I'm gonna be grabbing for these as I get ready for the day. Speaking of getting ready for the day, I was kind of starting to do my makeup and then I realized, wait, I need to film that get ready with me video and this is the perfect time. If you can tell, I already kind of have some makeup on my face. I've got, um, what did I put on? I've got the Halo Glow e.l.f. You can see I'm like in love with this product because it's almost empty and I need to buy a new one but this is the number four. It's kind of a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury. I have it here. So I have the Charlotte Tilbury version. You can't tell because it, all the packaging kind of wore off, but it's a dupe for this. But I really like this obviously because the pricing is a lot cheaper and I think the color match is actually a lot better. I use this kind of more so as primer slash foundation if I want to wear just something super light for the day. This, I could just go on with this as like my base. And then this one is more so for highlighting. So I haven't actually used this as like a base before. I haven't rebought this since I got this. So if you're looking for something to kind of have more of an inner glow, I would highly recommend the e.l.f. version. So yeah, I've already put this on. What else did I put on? Oh, I kind of did under eye correcting with my Merit. This is the Minimalist Perfecting Complexion Stick in the color Sand. And I just kind of use this to cover up some dark circles. But I think I'm gonna actually do a little bit more makeup than what I've already put on. And then if we have time with all the questions that I still have to answer, I think I'm going to do my hair because someone in the comments wanted to know how I do the waves in my hair. I obviously have like very short hair. And most days when I'm not really going out after I'm just going to work or I'm working from home, I do just like to keep my hair straight. I think that it's chic that it's straight like this, depending on how quickly we get through the questions, if I can also show you how I do my hair. I think that's it for housekeeping. Let's get started. Let's go into the questions. So I've got my iPad here that I'm gonna be referencing. Okay, so first category, we're talking all about life. The first question is, you've mentioned that you're originally from back east, what brought you to Vancouver? And I'll couple it with another question that I received is, would you ever move back to Toronto? So I don't actually think I've touched on this topic before. So I'm happy to talk about why I moved out west and if I would ever consider moving back to Toronto. I feel like I'm really bad at multitasking. So if you're like, you're not really doing your makeup and answering questions, questions at the same time, it's because I'm trying and it might not be working, so. I'm gonna go in with this Rare Beauty foundation. This is called, I forgot what the foundation is called, but I'll link it in the description down below, but I am the shade 270. As I mentioned, I'm usually okay with just the Halo Glow from e.l.f. and that's what I have on right now, but if I just wanted a little bit more coverage, I will go in with a proper foundation and this is the one that I've been loving. Okay, so why did I move to Vancouver? I, if you didn't know, I moved to Vancouver in 2017. I think at that time I was 24 years old. I had been working in the corporate environment for around like two years. So I graduated from the University of Toronto and right after university, I found a job within the e-commerce field. I've always been in the e-commerce industry and that's kind of what I studied in school as well. So when I graduated, I went straight to a corporate job. If you're familiar with the GTA or Greater Toronto Area, I would always drive from Mississauga to Scarborough. So that's from like the very west end to all the way up to the east end. And I drove for like an hour and 15 minutes 
one way there and back every single day for the last like I don't know like two years and it is the busiest highway if you're familiar with the 401 yeah there was like no other way for me to get there but to take the 401 so I would just have to like sit in traffic and it was brutal and I wasted so much gas and just so much of my time actually like in hindsight it was actually the time so I just put on my foundation and I put a very light layer of foundation and now I'm just going in with a beauty blender which is damp take out the harsh lines so yeah I did that for two years and then there came a point where I didn't think that it was worth it anymore so I started looking for jobs at that time I was also really interested in moving to New York being from Toronto and moving to New York they're very close in terms of distance yeah I think I was like looking into New York and at that time I, I would still consider myself very young at 30 years old but at 24 years old I was like the world is my oyster I can literally go and do anything from here on out and I randomly found a job that was based out here in Vancouver and it was for a company that I knew of because they're a very big name, but it wasn't anything that I was like really interested in. Like the title of the job was idealistic to me. To me, I was like, this is my dream job. This is like my next step. It will propel me to grow within the e-commerce industry, which is the industry that I've always loved. And I went ahead and applied, even though I was kind of unsure about the company because I didn't really know much about it. Okay, I'm gonna pause and show you the the next product so this is makeup by mario this is their soft sculpt transforming skin enhancer and i'm going to use a fluffy brush i used to apply this with like a different type of brush but i kind of like the fluffy brush because it doesn't create any harsh lines i don't know if you can tell but you can see that it's sculpting there a little bit but it's not too too harsh you can see that i have used up this product i've already hit pan i've rebought this this is my third one, I'm pretty sure, and this is a, a no-brainer for me. Like, I love this Makeup by Mario bronzer. Flying by this Get Ready with me, and that's primarily because I don't have a ton of steps in my makeup routine. I consider myself low maintenance. I, I try not to do too much, especially because I don't have a ton of time in the morning. So I'll just do, like, some dots where I think I need the most coverage. I do have like really dark circles. You can't tell right now because I already put the Merit concealer, but I like to cover that up to make me look more awake. So I applied for those jobs and then a couple weeks later I did hear from that company in Vancouver and I like didn't really think anything of it. Really the title of the role was what enticed me more and it wasn't really like oh this could be a way to get me to Vancouver or this could be a way to get me into this company. It was really the title that enticed me about the job because I knew that I could leverage that to kind of uh, I knew that I could leverage that title to go into my next role at that time I was a coordinator like an e-commerce coordinator and then the title was specialist I did like three interviews with them or yeah I did three interviews with them by the end of it I again like wasn't even really considering what it would mean to move there I not that I wasn't planning on getting it I just I don't know there was something about it that I'm like I was just going with the flow I guess is what I'll say. So what ended up happening is I got the job and they offered me more money than what I had asked for, which is crazy because they'll ask you what is your salary range or salary expectations. And then I said, let's say I said 60,000 and they were like, we're willing to offer you 65. I definitely probably lowballed myself. And when I heard 65, like that was the most money I've ever made in my life because as a coordinator, especially in 2017, I was making like 38,000 or like 45,000 around that range. And I was like, whoa, 65,000. And someone who was just kind of fresh out of university and getting her career started, that was like very enticing to me. And they also told me that they would pay for me to move there. I think they gave me like a 6,000 or $8,000 budget to kind of like move myself there and get myself situated. There were so many factors that I considered when making this decision. One of them obviously was the salary. That was really nice. As I already mentioned, the title, and I knew it would like propel me to my next career move, trying something new, being young, being 24, and the world is my oyster, and it could be something that I try for a year and just come back. And yeah, that was kind of my mentality is like, let me try this for a year. So I told my parents, they were so supportive. I didn't know anyone in Vancouver when I first moved here, except for one, family friend so she's my mom's 
age, so I kind of consider her as an aunt. And she did pick me up at the airport, but other than her, I didn't really know anyone else. I've never been to Vancouver prior to moving here, and I can't believe I said that. I literally just like hopped on a plane and moved to a completely different place that I've never been to before. But every time I was telling people, oh, I'm moving to Vancouver for this job, all they said were good things about Vancouver, it being so beautiful, being so clean, etc., etc. So there was nothing bad that was said about the city. And I was like, yeah, I'm just doing it. And I kind of did it blindly almost because again, I didn't know anyone like personally and I've never been there myself. I'm going to use the Charlotte Tilbury powder and it is a pressed powder. This is the airbrush flawless finish in number one fair. And this one I've also rebought quite a bit. This is what it looks like. I haven't hit pan on it yet, but I've rebought this one twice already. It's a price one but I think it's so worth it. I'm just using one of these to put the powder on and I'll focus mostly on where I put the concealer which is under my eyes. Yeah that's pretty much what I do and then we can go into my blush. So I hope that answers your question. I moved to Vancouver in 2017 for a job that I was really really excited about and the follow-up question of if I would ever move back to Toronto. I had a really rough time actually. I had a rough go in my first year or so here in Vancouver. I felt very lonely. As I mentioned, I didn't really know anyone. And if you had asked me then, maybe in 2018, 2019, I probably would have said, yes, I'm moving back to Toronto. Fast forward, it has been over six years since I moved from Toronto to Vancouver. And my answer right now in this moment is no, not permanently at least, and not anytime soon. If you have been a follower of my channel, you might know that we recently purchased a condo so we are laying roots here in Vancouver and it's because we've slowly but surely made a home here and it was very very difficult to move from one city to another one province to another um, if you've ever done that you could probably resonate with that sentiment and I think just with the time and your experiences you eventually you could go either way. You could go back home or you could continue to stay here. I do have friends who have moved from Toronto to Vancouver and some of them have moved back or have plans to move back in the future. Right now, if you ask me, no, I don't have plans to move back to Toronto. I still have family there. My parents are there. My brother is there and I visit there quite often, but I want to stay here. I want to stay in Vancouver. I eventually fell in love with the city and what it has to offer. I hope that answers your question. Which countries are on your wish list to go to? I mentioned this in a recent video, which I will link over here all about my goals for this year. And I mentioned that I wanted to go visit Spain. That is like my primary destination that I want to go to. I have been to a few cities in Europe and I want to continue to explore Europe because I feel like I there's just so much to do and explore. I definitely want to go visit more cities in Europe and for this year we are focused on going to Spain. Okay, the next question is a little bit deep but it was where would you like to be or where would you like your life to be in the next 10 years? If you were asking me location wise, I think I would still be here in Vancouver and in terms of maybe work and career, I want to continue to work on passion projects like YouTube. I want to work on my small business more and just doing things that I'm passionate about. I don't have financial goals in 10 years. I I think that life is about the experiences that you have and that's kind of what I'll say. Like, I don't wanna be like, I'm gonna be a millionaire in 10 years. Like, that's not the goal. The goal is to always be a good person, have really good relationships with like-minded people and working on projects and things that I enjoy. So that's my answer for that and I hope that answers your question. There was a question about my home buying process and what the decision was or how I made the decision from buying to renting. I already have plans to make a whole video all about that. So I think I might not answer that in this section and just stay tuned on this channel because I will be talking about that and I want to do it in series. So I want to talk about the decision, the financing, the mortgage, how we closed, etc., and package it up in separate videos for you guys to watch because I don't want to not do it justice and just have a like one minute clip of it in this Q&A. So stay tuned and thank you for that question. We'll kind of switch gears a little bit. So 
part of my channel, I do talk about luxury goods. I like to watch that type of content on YouTube and I also like to film that type of content. So that's why luxury is a category in this Q&A. So the first question is, what is one luxury purchase you regret buying? I don't like the word regret because I feel like regret is not something that I like to have in my life. I want to learn from mistakes or failures, but just for the purposes of answering this question, I think some luxury purchases that I regret are a few of my Hermes as pieces and hear me out on it. It's not because the quality isn't good. I just feel like I bought some of those things based off of impulse or wanting to play the Hermes game. I think 2021 is when they started my Hermes journey and what that means is I went into the store, introduced myself, I put myself on a list to be able to purchase a Hermes Kelly at some point. That wish has not been granted. I don't have an Hermes Kelly in my closet but I did buy something and it was something that I didn't need. I think I bought one of their wallets, like the very basic one. I think it's called a Calvi. I did end up selling that one. And then I was kind of like, why did I even buy that? I felt like I was pressured to buy it because if I didn't, then they wouldn't take me seriously. They wouldn't offer me a Kelly. And I mean, they still haven't and I did buy that. And then a few months later, I think I bought a pair of shoes. Again, like nothing against the quality or the design or the product itself. I think that it's mostly a regret of like, you didn't need those things and you're just doing it to play the game. It's like why I regret these things. But I think I still learned a valuable lesson out of it. Very pricey lesson, but I ended up selling them. So I hope that answers that question. And then the second question under luxury is, I always feel guilty every time I buy something luxury for myself. Do you ever feel that way? If so, how do you overcome? I do feel guilty when I buy things that I don't need, like those are things. I don't need those. I only bought it so that my essay thinks that I'm a like serious Hermes buyer and she should offer me a Kelly. I do feel guilty about that, especially because I didn't really save up for it or I don't have the funds readily available and it's sitting in my credit card. Like I feel guilty about that, but I try not to feel guilty when it's something that I think I deserve. I don't say that because I think I deserve luxury goods. Whether I've worked really hard all this year and I treat myself to one handbag per year, I don't feel guilty about that. The other piece about that is I have the funds to do so. So I've saved up all this money and I know that I'm going to be spending it on this. I don't feel guilty about that because I feel that I deserve it and I have the money to pay for it and I'm also investing and I'm also saving and I'm also paying my mortgage. Like everything is covered and I have this play money or fun money or money that I can use just to spend on whatever I want and what I want to spend it on is a designer handbag or whatever it is. So yeah, I hope that answers your question and I hope that it helps with kind of like the guilt feeling. I know that I wouldn't buy something that I can't afford or if I did buy something and it's just sitting in the closet, I would feel guilty about that. And then my next move is I would sell that so that I can use that money for something else. And yeah, I hope that helps you kind of with the guilt. And I totally understand what you mean and how you feel because I've definitely felt that in some certain instances when I purchased luxury goods. Okay, I took a bit of a breather because I feel like I was talking a lot and I needed to just take a breath. But we are going to get through all of these questions. I think I left off after the last luxury question. So now maybe we can go into my small business and then we'll end off on finances. So someone had asked me, what made you start your business? Someone also asked me, how did you start your business? And can you give advice on starting your own business? Which I'm happy to answer. And I will also do my blush while I'm talking. So the blush that I'm using is Merit, and this is the color Cheeky. This is what it looks like. I got this during Black Friday because they were having a really good sale and I do like the formulation. I don't know if this is the best color for me in my skin tone, but I'm committed to finishing it because I don't like to waste anything. So this is the blush that we're using today. And I used to apply it kind of how the girlies on TikTok did it, which is kind of like up here, but I don't know, like that wasn't really working for me. So. I've been loving using it kind of on a bit on the apples of my cheeks and a little bit up and I like that look. I'm also going in with this e.l.f. blush brush and just stippling that in. I don't know if I love this color but this is what I have been using. And then I probably should have done this first but I wanted to go in and just do my brows a little bit. This is the 24 hour brow setter by Benefit. I already kind of filled in my brows earlier but they're looking a little light, so we're gonna go over them 
again. Okay, so what made me start my business? I started The Line. If you are not familiar, I have a small business called The Line. It's a stationary company. I started The Line in 2020 when everything shut down and I realized I didn't have a lot of time now that I'm working from home. So in late 2020 in October, I decided to start my own brand. The reason why I started the brand, this is always such a, a funny story, but basically I was still working my nine to five job. And at that time it was really hard to navigate a nine to five because we transitioned from working five days in the office to then no days in the office and just working from home. And it was hard to make that transition, at least for me. And if you can relate to this, if you work a nine to five and had to go through that transition, please comment down below. But I found it really hard to communicate with people because Zoom was fairly new. I know in 2024 now it's not new at all. It's what we do every single day. But at that time it was still new. Manager tells me that she wants me to do a really big project, actually like the biggest project that I've ever done. It was something that she did last year and told me that I would be leading this project. And I had like a lot of limiting beliefs about myself. And I told her, not that I told her no, but I expressed to her, I don't know if I could do it. And she's like, I think that you can. She like really believed in me and not because she wanted to push me to do something I didn't want to do. It was more so that like she really believed that I could and it would be something that would like elevate my role and my career. I essentially didn't have a choice. And at that time, I would consider myself as someone who isn't very organized the way that I am now because the way that you guys see me now, it's like, okay, she has like trackers for everything. She's got Notion pages. She tracks her budget. I was never really this person and I kind of leaned into that as like I'm disorganized or I'm clumsy and that was who I thought I was and what I'll say is that yes that could be true but you could also change and in that moment in 2020 I had to change to move forward because I essentially didn't have a choice but to lead this project so I fell into a rabbit hole of doing research around how to get a planner not how to get a planner sorry but how to become more organized, which led me to using planners. And at that time I wasn't really very much into using planners. I fell into kind of this rabbit hole of this type of planning. And I always say it's kind of a niche type of planning. It's not super mainstream. What's mainstream in my mind is that binded planner that's dated every single year and then you stop using it in Feb or March. And that was my experience with planners. I never like really got through it the entire year. So what I found is a community of people who share planners and stationery, and then I just fell in love with it. It really resonated with me. It's essentially a type of planning where you can customize it based on what you need. They are ring binders. I wish I had mine here, but it's in my office, but essentially it's a ring binder where you can insert different sheets in whichever area, it's not book bound, it's not dated. It could be dated, but it's not in some cases. I will link the Lions website down below so you guys can kind of get a sense of what I'm talking about, but I fell in love with it. And I saw that there was only like two or three big companies who were selling planners and inserts, and then they were primarily also in the States. And at that time, like I was getting hit with duties and even just buying them felt in my mind like really expensive. And it was something that I wanted to continue to do. I knew that I could design my own inserts. I was familiar with Adobe InDesign. So I primarily did it for myself and I primarily did it because I wanted to become more organized. What? So it came from a need that I had in my own life. And then in the back of my mind, because I have always been within the e-commerce industry, I love this industry and I have always wanted to start my own e-commerce website and sell something and I just didn't know what it was. And for a long time, I thought it would be like something in fashion, like clothing or a secondhand like designer bag brand, the Real Real or Vestier Collective, if you're familiar with those. And when I landed on this idea, I tried it and I don't know, and four years later, I'm still doing it. I always say that I create the designs for a modern woman and I think of myself as a modern woman. And if you are resonating with that, then I think that you would like the inserts that I designed because it's something that I personally use on my day to day as someone who is an entrepreneur, as someone who works a nine to five, as someone who has a side hustle like YouTube. So if you consider yourself as a modern woman and you're into like planners and stationery and stuff, like I think that my brand, the line is for you or it could be for you. So yeah, I will link it down below and that is why I started the business. How I started it, I use Shopify 
And for a long time, I just designed the logo myself and it was so bad. I'm going to see if I can find a really old logo, like the OG logo that I designed before I hired a brand designer. But for maybe like six months, I used that old branding and it was really bad. Like looking back on it now, it's terrible, but you have to start somewhere. I didn't have the funds to hire someone to do my branding at that time. And that's fine. If you're in that stage of potentially building your own business and you don't have the resources or the funds to do it, like you can do it yourself. I used Canva to design my first logo. And then once I had more money, I knew I wanted to continue to invest in my business. I hired a brand designer, someone who I've just, I found her on Instagram. I really liked her vibe. I knew that she could be the right person to kind of bring the brand to life. And I think she did a great job. So I still use all the same colors that she provided me with. I used the logo that she provided me with. And yeah, it's been three and a half years. And I think once you have a really good idea and you think it's something that you could continue to grow, the first thing that you, in my mind, that you should invest in is a brand designer if you don't already have like a distinct brand. So when I say brand, it can be like your fonts, your brand colors, your logo, all of the things that will distinguish your brand from another brand. So that's kind of how I started. I just, I paid for it mostly with just savings that I had and it's grown to what it is today and I'm just so, so grateful. Okay, I just did my eyebrows and I don't think that there's like really any difference. Again, like very, very light makeup. That's pretty much it. I only thing I would probably add is like a lip product, which I'm using a Makeup by Mario one. I don't love this one. It's called Mauve Glow, but again, I like to use everything that I buy until they run out. I don't think I will be repurchasing this again, but good thing we are on its last legs. All right, so the last category we're talking about today is finances. Um, this is a personal finance channel, so naturally there would be questions around finances. So someone asked, how did you get disciplined with your finances? What advice could you give others who are trying to do the same? This is a really good question, and I was really, really thinking about this. And I think it starts honestly with my upbringing and my family and where I come from at the very core of it. I will try to give some more tangible advice after, but if you didn't know, I was born in the Philippines and I had a whole childhood there and my parents moved to Toronto when I was 11 years old. So I really grew up not in anything fancy. We were in the Philippines considered middle class, I guess. If you're comparing middle class here in Canada versus middle class back then, like we would be like lower class. Like there is a reason why my parents immigrated to Canada and that is to give us a better life, a better upbringing. So, so grateful for them for giving us this opportunity because obviously it was really hard for them to uproot their lives at 40 years old or however old they were when they did that and navigate a life here to give my brother and I a better life. Yeah, when we, when I was growing up, my parents were always out. I was pretty much raised by my grandma, I would say. I did see my parents, like they were around. It's just that I knew that they were working really often and that's totally fine because they were trying to provide for my brother and I, probably trying to save up money so that we could move to Canada. So I've always kind of had a view of money and I don't wanna say it's scarcity, but just that it wasn't always abundant. I think that that has definitely impacted the way that I think about money not positively or not negatively just it's just a fact of like that's kind of how I thought about money started to work as soon as I could like I think at 16 years old I had a part-time job and I have worked multiple jobs as well even while I was in university and I think it was because of my upbringing and like the want to become more do more or like give back to my parents because of the life that they've been able to provide us I just tried to do my best to give back to them. It's really translated into how I think about money. So that is one factor. The second factor is, as I mentioned, I did move from Toronto to Vancouver. When I was in Toronto, I was living with my parents. They were pretty much paying for everything. I didn't have to pay for rent. They were getting groceries. I was still very new in my career. So I don't think they were like expecting me to really contribute anything at that time. At 24 years old, when I moved to Vancouver, then I had to pay for my own housing, my rent, my groceries, everything fell on me. And I had to be super disciplined with my money because cost of living here in Vancouver is a lot. And I went from my parents' house to now having to pay for everything on my own. So there was definitely like a switch 
of like, you are now an adult who is responsible for all of these bills almost overnight. So that is another factor of how I had to become really disciplined with my money. And then I think the third is kind of during the pandemic. And the reason was because I was starting my small business. I had been working in the corporate industry for maybe five years at that time. And I had some money saved up. I had this inkling to do a passion project, something outside of my nine to five. To be able to do that, I needed money. I needed resources and funds to be able to invest in inventory, invest in a new printer, invest in all of these things to get my brand or my company off the ground. And that allowed me to be super strict with myself of what I'm spending on. So I would say those three factors really played a role in why I'm so disciplined with my money. It just allows me to be super focused on what's really important. And yes, I do buy luxury goods here and there. I do buy myself things that I like and I'm not like strict in the sense of like I restrict myself from buying things. If you watch this channel, you know that I do the occasional luxury unboxing and I do show how much I spend. So it's not that I restrict myself. It's just that I'm super focused and clear that the first thing obviously has to be all of my fixed bills that I have to pay every single month. And then the second thing is like, could this money go into funding my business? And then the third is like savings, investing. And then the fourth is like, if there's anything left over, then that's when I would probably spend on myself. A tangible thing that I will say is tracking your expenses, literally everything that you spend on. And I know that sounds daunting to everyone. It sounded really daunting to me to be like, why do I have to put it in an Excel spreadsheet? It just makes you so aware of what you're spending on and actually makes you kind of stop spending on silly things because you're like, I don't want to put this on my budget tracker. And for me, I took it to the next level of like telling you guys everything that I spend on. So like for me to have to come on camera every single month to be like, I bought this and this and this. And like, I actually have to stop myself to when I'm trying to purchase something to be like, do I want to, to really to buy this? Do I want to tell my subscribers that I bought this? There's just so many more roadblocks as opposed to just tapping your card. My biggest tip is if you are trying to really hone in on your finances and try to be more disciplined, tracking your spending will really, really help. It has changed my life. And I know that everyone who has bought the budget tracker because we do sell one on the line, it has helped so many people. And I will link it down below if you are interested in checking it out. But yeah, that is my tip for you. So yeah, that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know that get ready with me is maybe a little bit underwhelming and it's probably because I did maybe 25% of it already before turning on the camera. The other 75% was like barely even anything, but this is truly what I do on a daily basis. I know we didn't get to the hair. Truthfully, I don't really feel like curling my hair today. I like it straight. I've been kind of rocking it straight since I got it cut recently. I like away from my face. I'm able to just like move it out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. It really supports the channel. And I will see you guys in my next video, which is most likely going to be my March monthly money reset. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye you guys.